With the rise of PNSO, quality in terms of sculpt and paint application is now so good that even ordinary offerings approach what we used to get only in higher-end resin models. Together with GR Toys coming up, we're experiencing quality in a mass-produced line at far more affordable prices, almost such that for many of us, the attraction for higher-end models is diminished. Still, there'll always be something special about a resin kit sculpted to a high degree of fineness then masterfully painted by a talented artist. Once in a while, something really special comes along that makes it worth working the extra hours to be able to afford it. Today, I'm going to show you one that's truly worth the extra hours I put in to get it, the The Clay Studio T-Rex. The Clay Studio is based in Hanoi, Vietnam. And founded in 2016, it focuses on dinosaurs and mammalian megafauna in the 1 to 35 and 1 to 20 scales. They handle all stages of production themselves to ensure the highest quality control. Now, Vietnamese names are the hardest I've ever tried to pronounce, so I apologize for butchering these names. The founder and art director, Huang Mat Duy, who also sculpts and paints their dinosaur line, sculpted this T Rex. Then sculptor and painter Yuan Ngoc Hai, who mainly works on the megafauna line, dressed it in its amazing paint job. As many of you will recognize, this model is based on the FMNH PR2081 Su with the bulky aesthetic that seems to be on vogue today. It was inspired by Blue Rhino Studios' Su in the Flesh, which also seemed to inspire our recent Rebore Tusk and Kiss. This unapologetically well-fed form is also seen in prehistoric planets T-Rex as well. It's made of resin, which holds intricate detail really well. Now, this model, accounting for the curve, measures about 35 centimeters, or 13.8 inches, from the snout to the tail. And the highest point is the rise of the tail here at 12 centimeters, or 4.7 inches. At estimates of around 12.3 meters or 40.3 feet, that puts this quite nicely in the 1 to 35 range, something that will no doubt please many collectors. And here's our humanoid to match. You can get an even larger 1 to 20 or scale T Rex, which also comes with a juvenile. Incidentally, if you're a fan of the Blue Rhino, you can enjoy it vicariously through Killer Shrew Fan's video here. In fact, the Clay Studio also offers this T-Rex in the same colors as the Blue Rhino. However, this is what I fell in love with. There really isn't any foreplay to be had because everything hits you all at once. As soon as you see the form and those colors, your eyes almost can't decide where to look first. And while the head often gets immediate attention, the body is so beautifully painted, I find myself here at the same time. The overall colour scheme is a complex blend of dark browns, with such an organic appearance to the skin, I could almost believe it was real. The multiple layers to create this complexity and translucency is obvious, and I love these blends and transitions between the browns and the cream. In fact, the paint application in this photo is what made me fall in love with it immediately. Still, let's take it systematically, starting with the head. The sculpted detail is superb. You see in the maxillary area these very fine scales. And as we head to the edges, larger scales towards the margins of the lips. Yup, lips, because this T-Rex has taken the mostly lipped approach. You'll see some protruding teeth, but largely most of them are covered. I've shared with you that as I get older and my collection matures, I have enough roaring fighting dinosaurs and I prefer animals captured during the more typical non-violent moments of life. And here we have that. You'll notice these scars here. 
and on the other side. And both being the same pink suggests they probably occurred at the same time, perhaps during a hunt or about a facial biting. So even in a moment of peace, the animal bears marks of violence, a testament to the inevitable dangers faced by an apex predator. Moving up, you see the keratinous features, up the nasal area, and into the lacrimal region, then above and around the orbits. Now, these aren't over-exaggerated, with just the right amount of detail, and holding subtle colour variations. I like how the pre- and the post-orbital areas are balanced with these larger scutes. You have these almost scaly wrinkles to frame it from below. So just this one area around the eye is like having a very well-balanced frame. The eyes themselves are very well painted, something I always worry about. And from the front, you see the characteristic placement allowing that stereoscopic vision. And the eyeballs are very happily centered. You know, nothing spoils the face of a model for me more than badly painted cross eyes. And moving underneath, unfortunately the base is attached, so I can't show you the detail from below. But I think you'll agree that in the mandibular texture as far down as we can see, no detail has been spared. No articulated jaws means no seam lines to break any illusions. And by the way, this model also comes in a slightly open mouth version, so you have that option. But being able to see this lipped closure and a T-Rex living life minding its own business made this an obvious choice for me. And now we move to the body. Again, in many pteropods, the head is the star and the body the supporting player. But in this model, the body is a star all in its own right. Again, look at these colours, the translucency here. This really looks like flesh that's pliable to the touch, with all the warmth you'd expect to feel if you did. You can easily imagine the living pigment and all those blood vessels flushing the area, bringing out the colour. And even in the dark areas, if you look hard, you'll see veins of darker colour infused underneath. And that's one thing that sells the illusion of reality, a subtlety that doesn't blaringly call attention to itself. You'll also note the fineness of the skin detail. You have little creases, as well as the kind of skin pattern suggested in Tyrannosaurids. Of course, if you insisted on pure 1 to 35, you might as well get almost smooth skin. But here I think Dream made an excellent choice, giving us detail still, but making it so fine it looks completely natural. And look at the belly area, reveals the same kind of detail and regional variation. The limbs are nicely proportioned. I hope we will look at the arms here. You know, it's really in the small things that we see mastery. Uh, for example, when we look at the head, we of course get these exciting keratinous structures. But back down here in these tiny arms, we see they aren't given short shrift, with no shortcuts taken. And in this small area, we can appreciate how much care was put into the entire model. And then the hind limbs, now first the right side, and whoa, the beautiful colour blend is here again, going down the thigh. But then here, you see a defect, which is a pitted scar. Now this one is white, and we asked Dre about this. He informed us that the white ones are meant to be older scars, to differentiate from the fresher ones in the face. And down the leg, you see how fine again those details are. Very nice muscle bulk, as well as definition here. You see these cute start to appear. And then down the feet, and claws. But from any angle, the detail is really pleasing, and you'll hardly find a weak spot. And on the left, we see the same quality. And while this scar is more obvious, 
If you look carefully, you see other signs. For example, up here in the tie, there appears to be what looks like an old gouge. It's this kind of detail you have to look hard for and be surprised by that again makes this feel like a real animal. Not everything is advertised. And now the tail. Again, this really speaks for itself. There's another scar here. And by the way, if you don't like the look of some of these smaller scars, you can communicate that to the artist. And now for the base. I like bases since they afford more realistic, dynamic poses without clown feet. They also add context to a model creating a scene from life. And here is such a scene. The sandy beach is created beautifully. You see how realistically this dead horseshoe crab is sculpted and painted, half buried in the sand and still wet and it's easy to believe that the scent of it attracted this T-Rex to come investigate. The whole diorama captures a moment in the life of this often stereotyped dinosaur. You can actually ask for the model to be separable from the base, but if you did that, you would see the keying very clearly and lose the seamless realism of the sand covering the feet. It would have made this model easier to review, but other than that, as well as maybe packing purposes, I don't see why you'd want to. So, some comparisons. Now, I wouldn't have thought that this needed to be said, but the purpose of comparisons is not to this mass-produced non-resin kits, but to give you an idea of what a resin model can accomplish and why you pay a lot more. People also like to see how they compare to their own favourite models. I mention this because apparently, even when explained, in one of my videos, a couple of dullards lambasted me for comparing the reviewed model with the wild safari version of it. So first of all, we have the Rebor T-Rex. As you can see, both of these are beefy and well-fed. I actually really like this. The only nitpick I have is the jaw not closing fully. I think you can see in the, the clay what a difference that would have made. And here is the size comparison. Then we have my favourite size comparator, the PNSO T-Rex. Now this has been maligned for having oversized scales, but when it came out, it was in my opinion ahead of many others, and I'm sure when they redo it, it's going to be even more awesome. We can also see the Wild Safari T-Rex, one of my favourite mass-produced models, and also the earliest model with the fatty look so prevalent now. And finally, what I believe was my very first custom-painted resin model, the 1 to 40 of scale Monarch T-Rex from the Dan's Dinosaurs line. The paint job by Martin Garrett was my very first introduction to what can be achieved and you see the same amazing translucency of the skin when rendered by a master. It seems a very fitting symmetry that my first resin kit, a T-Rex, now has a companion in this newest resin kit, also a T-Rex, and each with a very different form that reflects the understanding of the time. So that's it for my review of the The Clay Studio T-Rex. 
Now, Dre only started learning 3D modeling in 2020. At the same time, he started researching for this model. So he was really juggling a lot of learning at once. The whole journey took two years to come to fruition. It's amazing that this came out of that initial learning. I've no doubt we'll see even more amazing work in the future. They've recently released their Quetzalcoatlus and Triceratops, and Dewey has an ambition to create the dinosaurs to make up a Hell Creek diorama. That's going to be awesome. Not to mention Cambrian and Permian fauna, something I most definitely look forward to. Now I've had the privilege to get to know new artists over the world, and I love showcasing their work so more people know about them. The Clay Studio has been some of the nicest people to work with, and communication is fast and excellent. They ship anywhere in the world, and each model will take 3-4 to four weeks. Now remember to discuss specifics like whether you want the body scars or the dinosaur to be removable from the base. I'll put a link to their socials below, and I'll see you in the next video.